I am Dr. Sharjeel and today this 21 years old male presented to me with complaints of droopy upper lids of both eyes when I asked him about duration he said gradually from the last five years this disease started and now it's very difficult to open the eyes he had chin up posture slit like palpebral fissures abnormally high bro position because frontalis tries to elevate the lids when i elevated the upper lids manually and checked extra ocular movements movements were diminished in all directions of gazes you can see little bit movements horizontally as well as vertically then I checked pupils and they were briskly reactive. After that I checked the fundus, the fundi and both fundi were within normal limits. There was no diplopia. So on the basis of history and examination, I diagnosed this patient with a disease known as chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia because the limitation of the motility is symmetrical and gradual there is no diplopia so what is cpeo and like the name suggests it is chronic progressive bilateral disease symmetric and there is external ophthalmoplegia because pupil is reactive so it's not total ophthalmoplegia and up to 60 percent of cases have got mitochondrial inheritance so the pathophysiology can be elaborated to maintain a high fatigue resistance extra ocular muscles have adapted to high mitochondrial content and higher metabolic demands compared to other skeletal muscles that's why these muscles gets affected in mitochondrial diseases like cpo and uh, the ptosis as well as external ophthalmoplegia occurs course is very slow there is bilateral symmetric ptosis and external ophthalmoplegia without diplopia and uh, there are different variants like the first differential or variant uh, is karen cyrus syndrome here we are checking the bell's phenomena and Bell's phenomena is very poor like this patient is closing eyes forcefully but the eyeball is not rolling upwards and outwards so that will affect its management as well so as we were discussing Karen Sire syndrome is its variant and along with external ophthalmoplegia it has got pigmentary retinopathy fundus of our patient was normal pigmentary retinopathy as salt and pepper appearance and cardiac conduction defects so that triad is present in karen sire syndrome so it has been excluded and the other variant is oculopharyngeal dystrophy along with external ophthalmoplegia uh, there is dysphagia the patient is unable to swallow normally especially the solids i have already discussed aculopharyngeal dystrophy in my youtube lectures so the third differential is myotonic dystrophy the features of myotonic dystrophy are mask like facies frontal baldness external ophthalmoplegia cataracts and distal muscle weakness so slow release of hand grip when you shake hand with such patients and you should always include myasthenia gravis and thyroid ophthalmopathy in the differential diagnosis as well so now comes to the management management of this young 21 years old patient is very tricky because it he has got severe ptosis and ex severe external ophthalmoplegia so we have two options in this patient eyelid crutches 
and minimal bro suspension so if we elevate uh, the upper lids too much the patient will be predisposed to exposure keratopathies and we have to minimally elevate the lids so that he can see and we can also supplement artificial tears with crutches or minimal sling so that was all about chronic external chronic progressive external of thermoplegia thank you